Good morning, good afternoon, good night. My name is Dr. Julio uh, Reynolds. I am here um, uh, on the My name is Dr. Julio Reynolds. I'm going to start this morning with an interview with Dr. Abdul Salam Al Ermali. And I'm going to talk, uh, talk to you a little bit about we, what we are doing before we begin, uh, we begin with Dr. Al Ermali. Uh, today, this this week, we release the top hundreds, uh, uh, the first top hundred uh, class of 2022, and we're gonna see a lot of surprises. Great doctors, great CVs that they are working with us, and they are part of this D2D movement that we are improving and we are doing globally. So uh, it's great news for uh, GSI. Also, we are working and we're gonna start next week with a group of coordinators uh, di directed to see uh, so uh, to see what we are doing with the DHP or the doctorate in healthcare business that we're gonna launch in August this year. So you uh, stay, uh, stay in touch with us because we, we are gonna uh, talk to all the professors and the doctors who are gonna work with us. We are gonna uh, do it with uh, MDs, we're gonna be uh, dentists, we're gonna be chiropractors, pharmaceuticals, and all the specialties that we have in healthcare. So it's gonna be a exciting, uh, it's gonna be a exciting 10 sessions that we're gonna have in the DHP. And also uh, what we are doing is trying to, uh, we are beginning, is the first stage of what we are gonna have with a universal uh, school of health that uh, we'll soon will know a little bit about it. And with this great news in advance, we are gonna start with uh, Dr. Uh, Alermali. So Dr. Alermani, thank you very much for being with us today. And we are very happy to introduce you in this GSI Foreigners and Dr. Abdul Salam Al Mari Al Ermali, right? That that that's your name, and you are from uh, from Libya. And uh, the uh, right now he's in Tripoli in Libya. Dr. Al Ermali, he's a staff member, lecturer at the Department of Oral and Maxillofacial Surgery. School of Dentistry, a Faculty of Dentistry in Tripoli, University of Medical Sciences. He's a visiting professor at Agadir University at Morocco. He's an international speaker, Compoint DGOI a Curriculum CDC. He's a coordinator of the TCOI Implant Training Center, director of ADIC Oral Surgery Training Center, member of research scientific committees, member of IADR, a member of EAO, member of WAUPS. So Dr. Alermani, good morning. Good morning, good morning, dear friend. Good morning, dear Julio. It's my pleasure to be with you and with other colleagues of Global Summit, the, the best 100 doctor around the world uh, to give and share my experience and knowledge about very, very interesting topic of soft tissue augmentation around implants. Thank you, thank you for invitation. With the ESI. What? What is your experience with the ESI? How you arrived with us? Yeah, this, actually it is not long experience, but I show and I participate in a lot of um, uh, activities and I watch a lot of live since from COVID-19, you know, this uh, time, all, almost time we stay in our house. So we try to, uh, uh, to watch a lot of uh, interesting presentations and interesting interviews with many of, of professors around the world. Yes, what we are trying to do is to uh, enforce the relationship between all doctors and all, doc uh, all the specialties. So yeah, very, very interesting idea, yeah. For, from all over the world to, to encourage them to do this kind of presentations and do the, uh, and show their experiences in different universities around the world and how we can yeah. work and how can we improve our clinical yeah. practices. 
So I, yeah, you are gonna talk <clears throat> a little bit about aesthetics. You're a, you're an neurosurgeon, right? And you yeah. you are gonna talk a little bit about aesthetics in the interior in in the interior sector, right? Yeah, yeah, actually, yeah. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. So thank you, um, thank you, dear friend. With no no more. Uh, uh, we are expecting for your presentation, so please begin whenever you want. Thank, Thank you very you. much. For Thank, being you. Here. Thank you, my friend. I will do. I will do sharing now. Yeah. Is it is it working now? Yes, it's fine. Yeah. So thank you for all professors and doctors attending this presentation today. Uh, thank you for invitation, uh, dear Dr. Kainor and dear Dr. Julio. Thank you for, uh, for the kind introduction. Uh, and my pleasure to be with you today to talk about very interesting topic of um, soft tissue augmentation around pallid, aesthetically pallid implant. So I will start with, okay. yeah. So my topic today about the soft tissue augmentation, how we can augment the soft tissue and what are the different techniques for augmenting the soft tissue around aesthetically pallid implant. As we know, this is one of the complications. There is a lot of complications of implants could be occurred in the oral cavity, some of them functional and some of them static, some of them related to the biological, biological problems. Today, I will talk especially about the static problems and the appearance and peri-implant soft tissue or mucosal recession around uh, implants, especially in the static zone. How we can uh, define it, how we can prevent it and how we can treat it. So we, we're gonna to take this patient from this position to the another stage or from this stage to another stage from the gray color to the pink color. So the pallors of static implant dentistry, as we know, three main pallors of static dentistry, the most important one at the key and the main key in the treatment plan and deciding which the most interesting techniques for treating such complication is the, is the restorative driven implant. Improper placement of the implant and, and proper position of the implant placement, this is high, this is, uh, has high risk three times more than the proper placed implant in, in the bone. Also, maybe the case have aesthetic problems from beginning, maybe the case needs soft tissue graft or bone graft from beginning. The third point is the prosthetic management because most of the complications actually related to the restorative driven position. Most of the implant that has aesthetically uh, problems or aesthetically uh, gray color in a static zone, most of the cases there is a problem in the position of the implant, improper implant position. Maybe there another cause of lack of soft tissue from beginning or the patient maybe have thin gingival phenotype, doesn't uh, the, the previous doctor or previous surgeon doesn't add any soft tissue to improve the transmucosal zone around the implants or neglected soft tissue bone or heart, both of them, because we need as we as we, we need 1.5 of hard tissue around the implant. Also, we need at least two millimeter of soft tissue around the implant to prevent such complication. The third point, improper pr prosthetic management. So high, high contour crown, maybe uh, improper crown placement, maybe, uh, maybe a, improper angulation of the abutment, maybe improper connection. There's a lot of problems could be occurred. And the most of these complications actually reported in the zone, which is called transition zone, where is the uh, prosthesis meet the very implant because of tissue. One of these complications may be related to the marginal gingiva or marginal soft tissue or marginal mucosa or mid-facial marginal mucosa around the implant and may be uh, represented in the form of discoloration or recession or soft tissue deficient in volume. Maybe there is a concavity on back side or more com complicated complication actually, which is papilla loss, which is very difficult to, uh, to build up again. 
So one of these complications could be occurred at related to the peri-implant mucosal tissue in the, in the form of discoloration only, or in the form of discoloration and peri-mucosal recession, or in the form of papilla loss. So there is a limitation actually in treating such complication around dental implants. Some of these complications related to the biological point of view because the, the, the implant is not like the natural teeth. And around the implant, there's a lack of vascularity. There is a, a, a deficiency in the, in, the, in the blood supply. You know the, soft, the, the nature of the soft tissue around the implants like scar. So when you're dealing with these tissue, you have to prepare the bed. You have to prepare the tissue actually in some cases before you're doing any intervention or any surgical intervention. The other problem, the chance of contamination that the possibility of treat treating such condition around contaminated implant has a fewer success rate than treating such condition around osseointegrated healthy implant with absence of contamination. So all of these complications around osseointegrated implant, we have to consider being a static score around these scientists. And most of the scientific report actually is based on clinical experience. There is no clear guideline in the literature talking about such complications and how we can treat this case and how we can treat the other case. There's many isolated reports, few controlled studies actually dealing with such complications and how we can treat them. So this is the pink static score and there is a modified pink static score. We actually, we apply this score uh, around the uh, soft tissue of the implant to give the patient uh, a specific score to uh, summarize the condition of the soft tissue around this implant. The patient with low pink score or pink static score have yani, actually have low prognosis and doesn't uh, have a chance to, to uh, treat such complication. This score actually consists of five points or seven points, consider the mesial papilla and the distal papilla, and the tissue contour and the gingival level with the adjacent teeth. So maybe sometimes the patient, patient complaining from this crown longer than the adjacent one. There is no any gray color, just from the, 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 bit, the, the, the lint uh, problem. The other cases, there is a gray color from uh, appearance from the soft tissue due to thin gingival phenotype or due to buccal displacement of such uh, implants. Like this case, the patient complaining from, uh, from pink, of the pink porcelain. He doesn't accept the pink porcelain and the pink porcelain pushing the distal papilla, pushing the margin gingiva, and the previous doctor try to try to try to treat the, 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 the deep uh, the implant deep position with adding some pink porcelain. And as we can see in the CBCT, there is a buccal placement and shoulder of the implant is placed buccally. So in such cases, you have to you have to do full clinical examination. Sometimes in, in, in cases you have to remove this implant and place an implant in good zone, on good 3D implant position. And sometimes we can deal with the with with such complication and absence of decontamination. So today we will talk about statically failed implant, but without any uh, biological complication, without any peri-implantitis. If there is a chance of peri-implantitis, so the, the treatment strat strategy will be changed. So the treatment approaches for such cases, you have to do good clinical examination. You have to exclude if there is any peri-implant uh, uh, pocket or attachment loss or not. You have to do peri-implant probing with plastic probe. You have to evaluate the peri-implant mucosal tissue. If it is thin, thin gingival phenotype or thick gingival phenotype, you have to do visual analysis from the buccal view and from the occlusal view to analyze if there is any concavity or there is any uh, evaluate the, the, the position of the implant and position of the crown. And you have to do radiographic evaluation. This is the clinical examination. You have to do peri-implant mucosal margin examination. You have to do uh, evaluate the mesial and distal papillae. You have to uh, exclude if there is any attachment loss or not. You have to exclude if there is any presence of exposed threads or not, because I, as I said, the treatment strategies will, will be changed completely. You have to uh, evaluate if there is any perimucocytes or perimplantites, as I said, 
and the most important key you have to evaluate presence or absence of interproximal bone loss. This is one of the most difficult complications to treat if there is any interproximal bone loss and papilla loss. So you have to do some other interventions rather than the surgical one. And this is one of the clinical cases, as you can see, the patient also doesn't accept this color. The gray color appears from the gingiva, and this is pink porcelain also. The patient doesn't accept this, this um, uh, result. You have to do visual examination of the occlusal surface to evaluate the thickness and the position of the crown, if it is in good position or if it is over contoured, if it is outside the, 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 the housing of the bone. So of some of the cases, maybe you have a problem in the thickness and the volume of the soft tissue around the implants, while other cases, you have vertical deficiency. The horizontal one is okay, but the vertical one is deficient. While in other cases, you have both horizontal and vertical augmentation. We will see actually how we can deal with such complications. As, uh, as I said, the second point, you have to evaluate the radiographic evaluation. But apical radiograph alone is not enough. You first, you have to do a periodic radiograph to see the dimensions and the type of the prosthesis. You have to see the interproximal bone height and evaluate if there is any chance of bone height or bone loss or not. But the CBCT is very important to know the 3D implant positioning. Maybe, maybe the implant is completely in buccal position and the treatment of choice for such implant to remove it rather than to any add any bone graft or do adding any soft tissue. You have to evaluate also the presence of fenestration or not, the buccal bone thickness, if there is any problem in the buccal bone, if there is any dehiscence or not, and you have to evaluate also from the CBCT or from, or from clinical examination. Sometimes you, have, you can evaluate it from the CBCT, soft tissue volume around the implants. And this is the same case when we have do the interproximal, the, the, the pre-radiograph, evaluate the interproximal bone for our, around the right implant and around the left implant. You can see there is a problem in the connection in this implant. And this is give the chance maybe for the, this implant to remove it if there is no solutions for this implant connection or fracture screw or, or uh, prosthetic uh, problems. And this is the CP. CBCT for the same patient for the right implant. You can see the implant is in, an implant in buccal position, actually, and there is fenestration in the buccal uh, bone. And this is on the left side, also, on, there is no buccal bone around this implant, slight dehiscence around the, uh, the, the, the first cervical part of the implant. And this is the same case. Okay, the final diagnostic step you have to do it to know actually the angulation of the implant, you have to connect maybe the cover screw or implant, uh, implant driver or uh, any implant device to the apartment and, 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 and see it from, from side view to know and look from side view to know the actual and confirm the prosthetic features and to know the final, um, the final implant position. So the treatment options for such case in some cases, it is indicated to correct such, such a problem with dental gingival prosthesis. It is not wrong to add some pink porcelain to uh, uh, compensate these problems. We will know which indications and which delimitation of this technique. The most common uh, technique treatment approach for such complication is a static reconstruction, even either with the hard tissue, which is not very common actually, or with the soft tissue. The third treatment option may be permanent or temporary implant submergence. So in some cases, you have place your implant submergence, keep it silent, maybe for a temporary period, for add the soft, to keep the chance for the soft tissue to grow up and try to accelerate and uh, improve the soft tissue creeping, or keep it permanent because in bad position and in case of multiple implant placement. The third option, the fourth option, sorry, the surgical repositioning, cutting the bone, reposition the implant in proper position, which is very, very rare uh, treatment approach, or explantation, as I said, in some cases. The final movement when we have actually interproximal bone loss and inter interproximal papilla loss, maybe you have to consider the slow orthodontic extrusion for the adjacent tooth for the implant to improve the interproximal bone and improve the interproximal papillae. So the treatment option is, uh, it's, it's, it's different from one client to another kind, depending on the treatment time and the number and the type of interviews with the patient and the patient expectation and the expected result actually with the patient. Okay, so the clinical examination, uh, as I said, this is one of the basic uh, strategies 
for the k gingival position, uh, position, the implant height, soft tissue uh, biotype, and soft tissue quality. Also, the probing, you have to probe the bone dehiscence, if there is bone dehiscence or not, as I said, bleeding or probing, chance of perimplantitis or, or perimucositis, and the radiographic examinations, and uh, finally, the prosthetic removal and evaluate the uh, final position of the implant. So there is no, in this, uh, in this kind of problem, there is no right and there is no wrong. Actually, it depends on the experience and, and depend on the case. The treatment strategies is different from one case to another, as we can see. So there is many treatment options. And, and now we want to know what is the best technique for each case. OK, as I said, one of the problem is, one of the problem is actually in the, uh, around the implants is lack of blood supply. So when you're treating or when you're doing uh, peri-implant surgery or peri-implant mucoplastic surgery around the implants is completely uh, different from this point, just, just from this point. The split is the same and the vertical release is the, almost the same. Uh, position of the connective tissue may be slightly uh, over than the natural teeth, but actually in the blood supply, we're dealing with a, a metal around the implants not we're dealing with vital root around the natural teeth. This is the first point. The second point is it's easy do, to do decontamination for the root. And it is difficult to do decontamination if there is peri-implantitis and there is, if there is a thread exposed in the oral cavity, there's a big chance of failure of this graft or, or this technique. So as I said, the technique is the same, the split thickness, all our split thickness around the, 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 the implants, try to do with split thickness, even over the threads, don't try to do full thickness and expose the connective tissue adhesion, try to keep the connective tissue adhesion around the implant to place your connective tissue from the palate on this connective tissue adhesion, try to do with split, try to reach the bone and elevate more two to, two to three millimeter over the spawn crest. Okay. Okay, there is many, many studies actually in the literature talking about the soft tissue augmentations around failed, statically failed implant. And the success rate actually a difference from one study to another study. Some study considered to do soft tissue graft without removing the prosthesis, while another study as in Zucchelli technique in 2013, it is, uh, he published a novel surgical prosthetic approach to do very pre-surgical intervention and pre-surgical conditioning for the soft tissue before any surgery. And he actually, he got very, very good result and very, very good soft tissue thickness when we, he, when we uh, did his technique, novel surgical technique. Okay, that, that's it. The second point, the site of, the site of harvesting the, the connective tissue, Sorry. Yeah. So the site of harvesting the soft tissue is, uh, sorry. Yeah. It's different from uh, a static zone or from, different from the molar area to the Rouget area. We try to harvest the graft from the molar area to get best quality either uh, of connective tissue graft or pre gingival graft. Try to harvest it according to the Zucchelli technique from the, uh, the most, most posterior part of the ballot. In some cases, when you need a lot of graft or you need thick graft, either you harvest the graft from the ballot and try to twist it or harvest it from tuberosity area. Tuberosity area is indicated when you need thick graft, when you have severe defect of soft tissue and you're gonna to try this defect with soft tissue only, it is better to harvest the graft from, from the tuberosity area rather than from the hard ballot. Okay, and you have to consider the, 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 the principal consideration. It is not um, uh, statically accepted to place a free gingival graft to hide the, the, the gray color in the aesthetic zone. Because the quality nowadays is more important than the quantity. Okay, and when you apply the aesthetic scoring tool around this case, this is a failure case when you, take, when you try to take and try to hide the gray color around this implant by adding free gingival graft. In some cases, it is better to keep the prosthesis when the ground when, when the, the crown is in good position, 
And when there is a fenestration apical to the crown, there is no need to remove this crown. And when there is a high contour or a, a, a over contoured crown, or the crown in the buckle position outside the housing of the bone or outside the, 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 the arch, you have to remove it. You have to give the chance for the tissue to creep, to mature more. You have to give the chance for interproximal papillae from the mesial and distal to grow up for the success of the surgical procedure. So there is three main surgical procedures, either chronally advanced flab in some cases, or vista technique or tunnel technique in other cases, or a free gingival graft in posterior area and non static zone. And there is a, another technique of adding bone, as is described this year by uh, uh, Dennis Ternau and Stephen Chu, of adding a GBR, placing a GBR with connective tissue graft at the same time and try to treat a peri implant defect uh, and try to maintain, he try actually to maintain because in the CBCT, the graft in a slightly buckled position, there is a concavity buckle. He tried to add a bone graft actually with connective tissue graft and the same technique and uh, trying to maintain the implant. Maybe, maybe this is good, uh, good choice to do it. Maybe the bone graft doesn't uh, stay for a long time. Maybe, maybe better to treat it with uh, just the connective tissue graft only if it is the discoloration in the coronal part. But in this case, the problem in the coronal and in the middle part. So maybe he had some bone on the middle part and had connective tissue on the coronal part to try to uh, treat this case. Okay, why in other cases you have a chance? You have a chance in the second stage when there is a concavity around the implants, better to do with epicalid space flap or if there is no keratinization or do rule technique to take the, the, some of the connected tissue from the palate and do rule technique, rule it in the buckle side and try to uh, try to maintain and to try to treat uh, such case. I want to move this a little bit here. Okay. So the freezing well graft is indicated only in non-static zone. As we can see in this case, there is lack of vestibule, shallow vestibule, with a lot of multiple frenum, lack of keratinization, and the shadow of the gray shadow of the abutment uh, 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 maybe uh, appeared in the, in the basic, basic complaining from actually from this uh, uh, gray, this, this coloration. But in this area, because it is not a static area, we can do a split thickness flap and add free gingival graft, apical to the abutment and to try to uh, correct the vestibular depth, removing the frenulum and giving that the, the, the implants uh, keratinized gingiva to help the patient to do more dental plaque control and perform more uh, uh, oral hygiene. And other cases, we have to do surgical uh, prosthetic approach. As I said, this is the Zucchelli technique 2013. As we can see in this case, the patient also doesn't accept this pink porcelain. Uh, patient has, has a smile, a low smile line. This is the CBCT of the same case, showing buckle placement of the implant with the shoulder, deep placement of the implant with the shoulder of the implant on the buckle side. And even the patient has low smile line, but the patient doesn't accept this uh, result. And he try, uh, he consult me, and he uh, take appointment with me to 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 treat such a complication. So as I said, I did first the peri-surgical intervention, I removed the old crown and uh, removed the old apartment, place and a new apartment, or you can keep the same apartment actually, but you have to remove all the shoulder finish line or chamfer finish line. You have to keep the apartment clean, smooth, without any finish line, placing a new crown with very limited small space with the interproximal papillae from here and from there and give that chance for the interproximal bone to grow more and give that chance for the marginal gingiva to grow more. As we can see, this is the same case. This is the pre and this is the post. This is the pre and this is the post. Now we have 1.5 millimeter of keratinized gingiva. You can, this is very, very good uh, to help you in the surgical procedure. And this is the occlusal view. We're changing the crown. We placing the crown inside the housing, reducing the, the, the over contour of the crown to give the chance for the tissue and to give the room for the connected tissue graft in the surgical procedure. This is another case, the same technique actually in all cases, removing the old crown, placing a new crown, short, narrow, placing a new apartment. If there is a problem in the apartment, wide apartment, 
you have to replace it with a new one, another one, to give the chance for the, the, uh, the soft tissue, mesial and distal, to grow and to give the chance for the marginal gingiva to grow up also and to creep. And this is the day of surgery. This is the non-surgical and this is the surgical. And this is the day of surgical procedure. Sorry. And this is the day of surgery. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, this is the day of surgery, as we can see. As we can see, we start with horizontal incision, three millimeter length at the base of the interdental papillary. And we do two vertical releasing incision. This is the coronary advanced flap because they have wide interproximal papillary mesial and distal. So I'll try to correct it with coronary advanced flap. And we have interproximal bone uh, intact, mesial and distal. After that, we start with the split, the surgical papilla. This is the key for the success. You have to maintain adequate uniform thickness of the papillae that will move coronally over the anatomical papilla. Why this is the key? Because the stability of the coronally advanced flap is based on the good adaptation between the surgical papilla and the anatomical papilla. Try to maintain the connective tissue adhesion over the implant. Don't try to use any kind of periosteal elevator to ele like, like around natural teeth. When you want to elevate the, the connective tissue over the root recession, no, all of these procedures, uh, sublet thickness. You can use 15C blade or micro blade as you like, no difference. Try to keep uniform thickness of interdental papilla, uniform thickness, epithelium, and good connective tissue. After that, you have to do two split, actually. Deep split, two, three millimeter, deep uh, 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 epical to the implant recession, or epical to the tissue recession, deep split. And the key is to do superficial split to remove all the muscle attachments from the mucosa. Because the coronary advanced flap is based, the success of coronary advanced flap is based on the intentional movement of the flap in coronal direction. After that, sorry. After that, you can see now how we can move the flap after the superficial and deep split in coronal direction without any tension. We didn't uh, deal actually with the papilla. You have to do deep utilization for the anatomical papilla, mesial and distal, and try to hold this flap with sling suture, mesial and distal, to keep the good adaptation between the flap and between the papillae. Okay. And this is the graft I harvest, a connective tissue graft from the bullet, and do folding for this graft to give adequate thickness because we can see there is a lot of missing. We need a lot of tissue in the buccal direction. Try to fix it with sutures underneath the graft and try to uh, move the flap in coronal direction uh, uh, over the connective tissue. Don't try to uh, leave any exposure, expose the graft. And this is be uh, before and this is immediate post-operative. And this is one week post-operative. This is the site of the bullet, and this is the site of the surgery. And this is the same case. After three months, we can move this marginal gingiva to this side intrasurgically and to the same side or same place with the adjacent tooth. There is a lot of a little bit of scar, but we it's okay. Just waiting for more for more maturation of this uh, uh, graft. And actually, Professor Zucchelli has a five years published study of five years outcome after coronary advanced flap. Another case, maybe when there is a problem in the crown and in the abutment on the crown, and you cannot remove this abutment for any reason, uh, sometimes you, you can keep the crown, reduce the contour of the crown intraoperative, clean the abutment well, and place the graft 
in this science over uh, the, uh, the, the, the abutment, extend the graft three millimeter at least mesial and distal, and do coronally advanced flab over the graft and suture it with sling suture. And this is the result of the same case after one year. You can see now the stability of the graft. This is after one year, stability of the graft over the implant. Okay, another cases of bilateral placement of the implant and bilateral statically failed implant in those cases, and there is right side concavity and the left side, a gray discoloration appear underneath the mucosa. Uh, when you're removing the crown, as I said, you have to remove the crown. You have to evaluate the connection of the abutment. If there is any problem in the connection and the abutment prostatic problem, you have to consider that also. You have to evaluate the final implant position before you uh, uh, doing any surgical or any kind of surgical procedure. You have to reconstruct a temporary prosthesis, place a temporary prosthesis over those implants, temporary of narrow uh, uh, crown, short crown to give the chance for the soft tissue to creep. The same protocol, actually, we follow the same protocol. We try to open split, placing uh, a connected tissue graft over the abutment, extend the graft, mesial and distal, at least through an apical, three, uh, at least two millimeter, for give uh, the, the nutrition for the graft, do coronal advanced flap, and the place the crowns again of short away from the graft. And this is the immediate post-operative result. You can see now the contour of the arch we corrected immediately. And this is the same result after three months. After three months, the papilla from the central and lateral need waiting more to give the chance for the papilla to creep more. Uh, and this is the result after six months. After six months now, the, the position is okay. The closal view is accepted. Actually, we have a problem in the connection around this implant. That's why the crown is not stable. We try to fix it with, uh, fix it with the wire and give waiting more for the interproximal soft tissue to, to be filled with, the, with the, the papillae. And this is the same case of lateral view of the crown. You can see now there is no any chance of gray discoloration. This is for the other side the stability of the soft tissue, very good uh, uh, compared with the other side. Another case of bilateral also, bilateral statically failed implant, more complicated, very thin tissue. We follow the same protocol, remove the old crown, place a new crowns away from the gum and try to wait for, for four, one, uh, four weeks or uh, eight weeks. Actually, it depends on the case when you feel it's okay. I don't know this video if it will work or not. I want to show you this deep split and superficial split. Okay. No, it will not work. Sorry. The video is not working. I remove it actually from, from the presentation. That's okay. I will open it again. Sorry, sorry, dear friends. I will, I will open it again. And I will share it. Again, sorry. Sorry Don't worry. for this. Okay, okay, thank you. Take your time. There is a lot of videos, that's why the presentation is heavy, yeah. So I, I will I will remove this video. Sorry, sorry for that because the presentation is not, and maybe the internet connection also is not good.
I will share again my presentation. Okay. Is it working now? Yeah, it's fine. We're looking at your presentation. Yeah, yeah. So we stop at this case of bilateral uh, statically failed implant. Uh, as we can see, there's a buccal placement of the implant and the shadow of the implant is uh, uh, appeared underneath the mucosa. So try to, as I said, when you, we, when you want to treat such cases, you have to improve the soft tissue around the implants and around the uh, apartment before any surgical procedure. If there is buccal placement of the implant or buccal placement of the crown, you have to remove it. You have to add a temporary crown of short and narrow one to give the chance of the, uh, of the soft tissue to, to grow before the surgery. And uh, on the time of the surgery, you have to open split thickness flap over the implant, full thickness flap, flap over the teeth, try to place the connected tissue graft over the, uh, over the abutment, extend the graft, as I said, mesially and distally and coronally, try to fix it with simple interrupted and cross suture. This is very, very good to give the stability of the blood clot between the graft and between the abutment. That will help in the adhesion. This is the immediate post-operative and this is the immediate and not immediate actually after two weeks. Uh, the result after two weeks, as you can see, this is the pre and this is uh, two weeks post. You can see that the contour now is corrected and this is the same, we correct, try to correct the volume. And this is the same case after three months. After three months, there is no any kind of uh, gray discoloration appear. We try to connect, the, uh, try to correct the contour, try to correct the soft, uh, soft tissue interproximally. The other technique of uh, so, uh, correcting the peri-implant soft tissue recession is implant submergence. This is a technique described by uh, Stephen Chu and uh, Dennis Tarnow in 2013. It's indicated actually in when the implant is not superficial. Implant is placed deep. When the implant is superficial, there is no chance and there is no benefit from implant submergence. When you're removing the abutment, and the place the cover screw, the soft tissue will not grow over the implant. So one of the requirements for this technique for the implant to be not superficial is a place deep enough not to buckle. Also, the soft tissue will not grow over to, to buckle implant. And you can do it in temporary or permanent uh, kind of intervention. You can place and you can do this intervention for temporary reason to give the chance for the soft tissue to grow and cover this uh, apartment or to cover this uh, implant to, or to cover this uh, cover screw, or you have to do it uh, permanent in the kind of, in the case of, sorry, in the case of multiple, multiple implant placement. As this is one week, just one week after implant decoronation, you can see after removing the apartment and the placing Maryland temporary bridge of short away from the gum, narrow interproximal, you can see after one week, this is the movement and this is the creeping, a creeping uh, of the soft tissue toward the crown, just one week. See, after one week, there is a creeping um, uh, discoloration. I know discoloration is not, uh, is not uh, uh, treated completely, but when you deal with such complication uh, uh, with creeping soft tissue, it is easier to treat rather than of that complication. So sometimes in some cases, it is beneficial to do implant decoronation before any surgical uh, intervention to improve the, the vertical height of the soft tissue. In this case, you can correct it with tunneling technique or vista technique. No need to do any kind of uh, uh, coronary advanced the flap or free gingival graft or, because it is easy case, just you have a problem in the discoloration. Uh, the, you don't have a problem in the marginal gingival height. The margin is with the adjacent teeth is, is, the, is okay. You have a problem in the interdental level on the distal side, you have to wait more for, uh, for maturation. So this is a case of tunneling technique or vista technique. You have to open a vertical incision at the freedom here and you can insert your graft from the freedom side to cover this uh, high discoloration. Okay, this is another case of implant de this uh, uh, decoronation. And the key for, for this case is palatal uh, soft tissue. The palatal soft tissue is okay in good position. The babilla is good position. So try to remove the prosthesis and the crown and replace the cover screw. 
and we want, we want to move the tissue from this position to the other position, we will see now without any kind of surgery. We, we just try to, to prepare the case for the surgery. And this is the same case of after three months of placing Maryland Bridge and the placing the temporary crown, okay? You can see now the movement of the tissue toward the crown, improving the interproximal papillae, mesial, and distal with the maintain this the shadow. The shadow now you have, or you can treat it with any kind of simple interventions. The best technique for Vista technique is the best technique actually because the scalation is away from the interproximal papilla and away from the marginal gingiva. You can open a, a small incision at the okay. You can place uh, uh, do a small incision at the frenum and try to correct it with the Vista technique. And this is the same case. And you have to wait more for the soft tissue. Another case also removing the crown, removing the abutment, place the cover screw placing Maryland bridge and to try to reduce the height of this tooth every one month for three months. You can see even the interproximal tissue is improved without any kind of surgery. Just we wait. The case need surgical procedure, yes, but you, the key in such cases, the very surgical preparation. You have to prepare your case well. Don't rush the patient to the surgery and complicate the case more and try to do uh, uh, correction, uh, complication rather than correction. And in other cases, it is better to place this implant silent permanently because the adjacent teeth is almost destructive and need crown preparation and short teeth. The patient need static crown lengthening. So in this case, I open a split thickness flap over the implant. I try to vertical and horizontal augment and use the healing apartment to carry the connective tissue graft for vertical augmentation. And try to move the flap coronally over the connective tissue. Don't try to keep any graft exposed actually. And this is the same case after three months from working on the temporary. And this is the same case after three months. And this is the temporary procedures. We work on the temporary, give the chance for the soft tissue to creep, prepare the adjacent teeth because it's indicated for a preparation. From beginning, the case indicated for indicated for bridge, not for implant because of soft tissue deficiency. But the previous doctor tried to correct it with placing implant. The patient not happy with the, with this implant. Patient to uh, patient uh, patient want to to treat to to solve this complication. So in this case, we keep the implant permanent, silent under the bridge, and we try to connect the, uh, the soft tissue vertical and horizontal and give the chance for the gingiva to creep more coronally. Another, another uh, treatment approach, dental gingival prosthesis, is indicated mainly in the maxillofacial discrepancy or when there is a screw retained prosthesis on all the, the, all the arch, when the patient has no smile line. Hello. It appears that we are having some uh, connection problems. Let's see if uh, Dr. Aramari uh, can connect again. But uh, <clears throat> we're waiting for his response.
Just a second. Okay, this, what we are gonna do <coughs> right now is until Dr. Lerner Mali uh, appears again in the connection, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about the kind of courses that we are trying to move and to improve with the DHP that we're having in a few months. Uh, the idea of the DHP is to bring to all healthcare professionals to understand how a, how you can manage your office to be more efficient, to be a better, a, to have a better, better relationship with other specialities and other colleagues, and to have no problems when you work a, with all the people that you that surround you. So the idea of the DHP is to improve the kind of work that you are doing at your office, wherever you are. If you are in the States, if you are in Germany, in Asia, whatever, in Africa, South America, whatever. So the idea of the DHP is to have to deliver all the potential that we get, that we have in every aspect when you are opening, or if you want to innovate, if you want to make a new business, if you wanted to do something different than what you should you usually do, is to be, the best way to do it is to take this DHP. So you can you can uh, you can <coughs> read about it in in our uh, web page that we have it under the name of universalschoolofhealth.com, and it's it's, it's going to work fine. It, it, we are putting this in the, in, the, in the connection and you can also have credits for these webinars. This, this webinar is going to be in the future, is going to be part of the school also. And what we are going to do is to, to, to right now you can get your CE credits for this kind of course. And after that, we can do do it by the school also. So the idea is to connect with us, connect with us and connect globally with all your colleagues and the, all the healthcare professionals that we have in around the world. So this is the main, this is the mission, this is the vision of the Global Summits Institute and also the Universal School of Health. So <clears throat> we uh, cannot connect with Dr. Adler Mani. I was enjoying very much this presentation, very nice presentation, very well done. So you see he's uh, right now in Tripoli in Libya, but it, we can see uh, the, the global positioning is gonna let us know about his job and let us know about from other people job around the world. So the idea is that we can, uh, united, he can use the experience of other doctors in our personal way of treat our patients. So uh, it's a wonderful idea. We're going to have this kind of coordinators with every specialty that we have in healthcare. You know? So this is working fine. So I don't know, we maybe we're having and we are almost done with that time. So <clears throat> Let's keep in touch. So thank you, Dr. Alder Mali. I think he he has some problems with the uh, with the connection. I uh, I think he he gonna connect again. But um, thank you very much. It was a wonderful presentation. You did a, a very nice job. So <laughs> let's see. We're gonna wait. We're gonna be here in about uh, one more hour. We're gonna be here with uh, Dr. A. Gurian, who is going to host one of uh, other guests that we are having from around the world. So thank you very much for being here. Don't forget to get your CE credits, and uh, we are gonna we are gonna be very happy to welcome you at the DHP and the Universal School of Health. Thank you in the name on behalf of the Global Summit Institute. Good morning.